Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's one of those days. Share. Oh. <laughs> you like? Oh, I love your hair. I got my do. hair did just for you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's just beautiful. Just around. <laughs> I figured in honor of Ronald McDonald and all. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I don't look like him today. <laughs> I know, you looked like Bozo earlier. <clears throat> Shut up. <laughs> so, right. hello everybody, and welcome oh, to... Hi. Yeah, we're on. Actually, um, this is like our third try. But yes. uh, welcome to our vodcast number 12. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about productivity and workflow, getting ready for the school year, getting all, getting yourself organized, and... Today, we have a very, very special guest, very dear to our hearts. Um, no pressure and, there, Yeah, no pressure. His name is Greg. Greg, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Greg. I'm an Aquarius. I like long walks <laughs> on the beach. Um, I don't know. I think that's everyone's intro ever. I don't know. Um, I'm in Texas, and so um, I apologize if you were expecting a, a deep southern drawl. I can fake one if you need me to, but uh, otherwise, um, just kind of a normal guy. It's down here um, suffering through the heat. It was like 107 the other day, Ooh. so, you know, it's it was only 93 today. It was awesome. It was like I, I could almost wear pants. Yikes. That's terrible. So... All right, are. and so this is vodcast number 12, episode 12. I know. Oh, and, and we're on a different day. We are day airing today. on a Tuesday because? Yeah. Because of the holiday. We didn't want to have to worry about broadcasting on Thursday night, even though, and who was it, Andrew, said that yeah. he won't. He's, he's going to watch it still on Thursday. Hello, Katie. Are you still there, Greg? I'm here. Oh, Okay. I think Katie's okay. frozen. Oh, she was frozen. Am Katie, I still frozen? That sucks. <laughs> the heck? Am I still frozen? No, you're no, good. you're unfrozen. Okay. Jeepers, creepers. This is one of those. Um, it's a murky small kind of day. Where... I know. So um, we are the Lady Geeks. We are passionate about technology and excited to share with you what we learn. Every week we choose a theme, and we've already mentioned the theme, but you can find us on Twitter. And I'm at Katie Regan 88 on Twitter. And I am at Sherry Sloan. And Twitter. if you would like to join in the conversation tonight, use the hashtag LadyGeeks on Twitter. Uh, you can also leave us comments on our website, and that's ladygeeks.org.info.net.us. Not dot me, not dot com. Not dot com. <laughs> we never told that story. Do, do we want to tell the story? We can tell. The, well, just the guy won't give it up. <laughs> So you, have <laughs> you, have, you have a squatter at ladygeeks.com? You have a squatter? A squatter, and there's yeah. no website there. It's just a scroll of dating sites. Well, is yeah. that not what Lady Geeks is all about? That's no? Not, oh. No. <laughs> well, all my productivity tips are out the window. <laughs> I mean, one of our sessions is called Speed Dating, Speed dating for Techies. Oh, oh Greg, you, you missed that last year. Uh, there was a huge hit. We'll be doing it uh, for the whole, I think we're going to be doing it for the whole conference. I'm not sure yet. We haven't gotten the details, but it's on the conference schedule for speed networking, and that was our baby last year. That's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, making its way through Texas, and everyone's wanting to do a speed date your iPad and a speed date this, and uh, it's, uh, uh, having been on the presenter side of that, um, mm -hmm. It's like beating your head against the wall because after like the second time through, you're like, okay, I'm doing the same thing over yeah. and over. Yeah, yeah. You have I to can definitely it, see the value on the teacher side. It, it's so fun. And I think to circumvent that feeling, Greg, you have to actually participate with your people. You know <laughs> well, what I'm saying? And of course, we're there, so that makes it fun. It's true. Like That's that. true. <laughs> um, so so th did you intro, Greg, like where he's from? And you yes. said this is our good friend. No, did you miss that whole part? I think I did. You did. Did you zone <laughs> out or were you attention. frozen? Oh, yeah, you no, missed I, it. <laughs> I think I was messing with my lower third. 
Oh. That's what she um, said. Yeah, you can... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spatula. So, did you know, <laughs> Sherry, that you could save your settings? I tried. I, I couldn't find it. I saved it. It's called Lady Geeks. Yeah, mine is too. And if you scroll all the way down the bottom and click that little green plus sign on your toolbox, it'll just oh. automatically add it like that. That little green plus sign on the toolbox. On the very bottom. Um, oh, so something cool happened to Sherry and I today. Oh, yes. Everybody. Oh, yes. Would you like to tell? Uh, sure. Sure. Yeah, well, why don't you tell, because you probably know the call letters and everything. Oh, um, Sherry and I were interviewed on a radio station this morning. It's a local station out of Oneida. Um, they broadcast around the central New York area. And it <laughs> the uh, DJ Todd is um, a longtime childhood friend of mine, and he watched a couple of shows and said, hey, you guys should be on, uh, but then warned us that only old people watch, or listen to <laughs> his program. <laughs> So we had to explain what a hashtag was, and yes. that was fun. That was fun. It was so good time, Was vodcast part of the uh, the glossary of terms that you had to discuss? No, we didn't go there. We called it a show, right? Yeah, I was actually just on the phone with my grandpa, and you know, one of those words. Okay, <laughs> grandpa, I have to go. I have to go. He's like, well, what do you have to do tonight? I said, well, I'm I'm going to be on a show. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's what, a podcast. Stand up? Well, it's a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. Yeah, that like, one. Um, it's an internet show, and well, this is this <laughs> is the same phone call where he goes. Now, one of your cousins was telling me about this thing called the the book face. Um, <laughs> oh no! And she said it's on it's, it's awesome. on my telephone. How how do I get to this? <laughs> I said, Grandpa, I don't think it's on your phone. Don't don't worry about it. He goes, Ah, good. I'm no. I didn't want to worry about it. I don't care about any of that crap. <laughs> You know, I'm actually offering at my local rec center um, for seniors Facebook f uh, for beginners because I think it's kind of intimidating. I think a lot of grandparents do want to be on it. So, so they can um, keep up I, with their families. Yeah. Yeah, so I show them around Facebook. That's awesome. No, that's really, yeah, really cool. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. excited about it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I have quite a few people signed up so far. Nice. Yeah, I, I had to um, put, put aside my iPad for seniors' classes until next yeah. uh, the spring semester. <laughs> I, I fully understand why. Yeah. Um, so, so the next part is follow up, which, as you will see, I do have follow up, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. That's the part that's hidden in the notes. But, but, <laughs> but, 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 no, you can't look. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, we are going to be sharing a myriad of things tonight and how we plan on preparing for the beginning of the school year. Uh, we've invited Greg to come on because he is... Oh, Greg, do you want to explain actually what you do instead of just walk, long walks on the beach? And Sure. I mean, if we're going to get all like professional about this. <laughs> um, so I work for a school district in uh, Austin, Texas as an educational technologist, which basically means I help teachers to uh, think about how they will use technology within their curriculum and within their uh, teaching and learning goals. And uh, specifically, one of the things that I, I'm just really passionate about is uh, personal productivity and being able to be more efficient with the time that you have. Um, you know, the, the classroom is, is such a precious amount of time and you just don't have nearly enough time. And that's the one complaint every teacher can agree on is that there's not enough time. And so rather than say, just kind of be upset about how much time we are missing, I said, well, how could we do a better job with the time that we have? And so I just kind of, over the last several years, have really spent a lot of my own time um, just trying to learn more about productivity and how to be more efficient with time and how to prioritize and be organized. And uh, sometimes that means it's, it's a, there's a great digital tool for it, and sometimes it's the good old pencil and paper. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm all about finding a system and a flow that, that works for the individual teacher that I'm working with at that uh, particular juncture. And so um, at the end of the day, I think the tips that you're going to hear from me and the things that I just have to say, it's, it's all just kind of relative to what you find is successful in your own practice. So take them, try them out, do what you will with them. Uh, if you don't like it, that's great. That doesn't hurt my feelings at all because I want you to find a system that works for you. That's why, you know, we have three opinions on, or three um, demos today because, you know, people are going to pick and choose what they want to do in week one. 
Um, you know, Katie, the, the, I think the reason why this topic came up as far as, you know, us focusing on this in July is because I think that all of us in finals week are planning week one of September. And I know I do. I, I know every year during finals I'm like, okay, I see him struggling on this part, so that means I should be doing this. Like, I, I can see where my, my kids are struggling, and so I sort of revamp it during finals week. And so it's really exciting in July to be talking about yeah. Do you know what that's called, what you just said that you did? It's a, it's a dirty word. It's called data-driven instruction. <laughs> no, no. A that's word. a dirty word. I don't like that word. <laughs> that's what it's called. There are no numbers, so therefore it is not no, data. No, it, it is. It's feedback that you're no, – it's data. No. Just, no. Because it's not, no. just because it's not numbers doesn't mean – Okay. I refuse to believe that I'm data driven. You are. You are no. without even knowing it. Oh! I avoid all those data classes. I hate them all. Called you you're analyzing the formative assessments and the summative assessments and then you're in, and you're changing your instruction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It sounds like Whatever. the same learning process I had to go through with rubrics. I hated yes. rubrics. Yeah. I hated them. I hated them. And then I finally had someone show me how they could actually be used for good. And all of a sudden, it was like my light, you know, the, the light had just struck my eyes for the first time, and, and the scales fell away, and I understood, and I saw, and I realized that rubrics weren't evil, the way they had been used was evil. So it's not that data-driven instruction is evil, it's just that it's not used well. And in week one of school, oh, well, our school, and our, our, I don't know when you guys start, but I think it's that first week of September on our show, we're having Andrew Stillman. And between Andrew and Katie, we're going to teach you how to put those rubrics right into the Google Doc. And then uh, you can very, very quickly and easily um, do analysis on your items in the rubric. Um, you can see the averages across your rubric items. Uh, and then, again, you're analyzing the data so that you can inform your instruction. I mean, I know in New York State, most of us are giving that pre-assessment right at the beginning of the year. You throw that um, into... A spreadsheet. I have a Google form that I have the kids enter uh, all of the rubric data into the form and then I can look at it. We can all look at it together and we can look at it over time. Um, anyway, cool. I, anyway, I digress. I digress. I digress. You're so cute. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start screen sharing in a second here, but my idea for starting the school year was um, I have a very special school year this year in that I get Chromebooks. Um, every one of my students has a Chromebook, every 10th grader. And I, of course, am into <laughs> this a lot. And so I decided that I wanted to have my first day of school, or first day of them with their Chromebooks in my room, to be on my class website. And I want my class website to look like some, something like what I'm going to show you. This is what I made in like four minutes, so it's not like the real thing. I don't have my site yet. Oh, and through making this tonight, though, I decided that for sure I am not using Google Sites. That is, that's yeah, hideous. It's really uh, difficult to use. When, uh, you know, we use Weebly for our website, and Weebly is so easy and so cute. And Google Sites is clunky and ugly, and this is not my best work, so. There's a lot of navigating that you have to learn. It's very difficult. I agree. I used it, um, I made the Playdate website for Playdate Syracuse and it I was pulling my hair out most days and it'll take some kinds of HTML and not other kinds it was just it's ridiculous but so this is just what I threw together again using Google Sites which I'll never use again um, and this is my plan is that on basically day one I really want my students to figure out what we're gonna be doing in the classroom but I want them to explore a little bit so I'm going to have up there all a bunch of logos of all this technology. Don't look at all of it because oh, I'm covering my screen here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Don't look at all of it because I'm going to be presenting that. Some of those are surprises for you. Um, but so I, so I plan to have them going through and each one of these will link to something about that, whether it's a YouTube video or its website or something, where they will learn about what these things will do. And then I want them to blog about what are they most excited about using. I'm also going to categorize them, so this is what you use when researching. This is what you use when presenting, you know. 
um, to, to curate images, whatever. Um, and so I'll have them categorized as well. So that's kind of, you know, what I'm thinking about for my first, like, my organizing myself, but also introducing my students to everything that they're going to see uh, in the school year. That's cool. So, I like that idea a lot. I know. I know I keep hiding that part from you. Don't, <laughs> don't look. <laughs> okay. I like that idea. Getting the students started with the, um, the tools that they're going to use. Yeah, and, and getting them excited about the tools. And that's one of the things that we dealt with this past year in my district. Uh, we, we actually just finished um, doing a full K-12 iPad implementation. And when we asked for feedback about that, the students uh, just overwhelmingly said, we wish we knew up front what are the tools that we were going to use can we agree on them across the board? Can we, you know, so that one teacher is not using one app and another teacher is using a different app that does the same thing, and a third right. teacher is using a third app that does the same thing. Right. Can we agree and can we know up front so that we can go ahead and teach ourselves the tools and then not use class? And this is what the students said. Yeah, I mean, awesome. this wasn't even like me going in and saying, "Oh, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this?" It was, you know, fourteen-year-olds that were saying. I wish I had this in advance so that I could teach myself how to use the tool and then we could get on with the lesson. Mm -hmm. I like that. I feel even better about uh, my idea now. <laughs> you're a genius. Oh, thank it's you. Like, um, Soundbite! <laughs> <laughs> you're also flipping it for them, too. It's more inquiry-based. Yeah. I like it. Are you finished? I'm done. Dude. Okay. You, you I have a... A, a list of things that I'm going to do that first couple of weeks um, but before I even walk through the door I am going to set up my Remind 101 classes. Um, I'm going to be teaching a new prep and one of the things that I struggle with as a high school English teacher is um, the communication piece with parents that constant open door communication. It's not that I I don't communicate with them but I tell them if you want to know something about your kid you need to come to me um, but a lot of parents, and especially in my district, are working two, three jobs just to make ends meet, um, kind of like myself. I am, you know, a single parent trying to get all this, all these jobs and all this, you know, trying to make ends meet, and I don't always have time to be on top of every single piece of paper that comes home. Uh, so one of the things that I want to do is just to figure out better ways to automate my um, communication. And I've used Remind 101 in the past. I, I didn't use it last year because I was using Edmodo, and it didn't really work with parents. They weren't really getting on board with that. Um, but everybody has a cell phone, just about. Uh, so Remind 101 will allow you to text, mass text your students and parents without seeing anybody's numbers. Like, you know, there's no exchange of numbers between you and them. It's just uh, it's a secure site. Uh, so I'd like to show you the back end. They just redid it. It's very, very simple to use. And this is one thing that I've gotten a lot of my teachers who are have that trepidation about technology, they're able to use this with ease. So all you have to do is to give your students the number. This is the number. And then they in the text message or the parents, they would add your code. Mm -hmm. And then it would sign them up for your list. And all you have to do is type in your message there. You have 140 characters. Uh, you can schedule it for later, and you can send it to everybody on that list. You can't pick and choose who you want to send it to, which is fine, uh, but it's really a nice thing to have. There's also an app. Um, I think. It's beautiful. Yeah, uh, the app is really nice. I know um, people have done reviews for them. Uh, but Remind 101, Brett was on, one of the developers, one of the uh, co-founders was on our show uh, a couple months ago, and again, their company is just amazing. They want feedback from teachers. They're constantly asking um, teachers, you know, how do they use it and how can we improve our product? So I just want to show that real quick. That's number one before I even walk through the door. Another thing I love about that while you're getting set up for your next one is um, if now Katie and I keep crazy hours all the time so we're often working until 11, 12 o'clock at night and if you try and send a text out at 11 o'clock at night the Remind 101 um, will, will say hey are you sure you really want to send a text out at 11 o'clock at night isn't it kind of late and then it reminds you to actually schedule it you know at a more 
reasonable right, hour. Right, so hour, I yeah. love that they put that in there because I always forget what time it is when I'm working at night. Yeah, we had uh, a friend of mine that was using Remind 101 with, uh, he was doing senior English uh, classes, and mm -hmm. he just went straight through that um, little prompt and decided to go ahead and send them. But his hours were more like 1 to maybe 3 in the morning. And so he would just go ahead and send it like, well, you know, if it's, a, it's after midnight, their phone should be off and, or under the pillow or, or whatever. And so he was sending these text announcements uh -huh. out to the kids who were then responding to him saying, why are you texting me at 2 in the morning? Oh, to my which, God, it's hilarious. Now he's replying back going, why are you awake at 2 o'clock in the morning? Of course, of course. Like, this is a no-win situation, so... Uh, keeping responsible hours, I think, is, is going to be a good productivity tip. Um, you know, just It's not important that people see that you're working those kinds of hours. And it's actually more important that maybe they think that you're sleeping and actually <laughs> living a balanced life. I don't know. Um, right. and, and so don't, folks at home, please don't send text messages to your students at, you know, 1230 at night, 2 in the morning. Well, That's if you use Remind 101, you won't be. It's, exactly. it's the safeguards against that, which I love that safeguard. Okay, so I know, I think Greg's going to talk about this. Uh, Greg and I have a si very similar things that we're going to be talking about. He'll piggyback on this, and I just want to show that really quickly. This website's called If This Then That. It's like that um, thing you learn, in, it was an algebra, the logic. Mm -hmm. um, if this happens, then this will happen. You know, if it rains, I'm going to open my umbrella type thing, and I remember learning that in high school. Uh, but if this and that allows you to set up all kinds of things, um, I can, some of the ones I've liked in here, uh, it used to be that you could tweet something out and it would be sent to your Evernote or favorited a tweet, uh, but Twitter took off that front end. It allows you to tweet things from Instagram or from uh, Feedly, uh, from the RSS feed. Uh, I can star something in my pocket app and it'll go automatically to my Evernote. That's one of the, they're called recipes. And you, there are just a ton of them. These are ones that people have already made, but you can create your own. And all you have to do is follow this through. Um, like if I wanted to uh, add a picture to Flickr and then I wanted it to be shared with Foursquare, I could set up, well, this is what I want to happen. Uh, that's a very simple um, recipe, but there are things that you can do that will help your productivity so much better and um, curate all of the content that you're trying to use with your students like, uh, through Evernote or through your RSS feed or through Feedly, um, through Dropbox, and I think Greg's going to talk about that. So, I mean, it's, I think you should test it out, try it out. Oh, there's Buffer. I love Buffer. So, Katie, what's like a sample recipe that you would want to use in the, you know, because this is all about productivity for the teacher. So, what's like a sample recipe that you would use for our focus here today? Um, something I I love Evernote and I love saving everything in Evernote. Uh, I had one here. It doesn't work. I don't know. I don't think it does it. It doesn't work anymore. But um, if I favorite something, it gets sent to my Evernote. Uh, so anything that I can automate to my Evernote, if I uh, tweet something out, or if I put something on Google Plus, an article on Google Plus, it can be sent to my Evernote automatically. Or if I find something on Zite, or if I find something on my RSS feed reader, I can send it to Evernote and save it. Now I've known about IFTTT for a long time, and I just I don't use it because it doesn't play well with Twitter. And since it doesn't play well with Twitter, I mean that that's how I would really want to use it. What I really want to do is I want to be able to update to Twitter. And, um, oh, no, like things I favor on Twitter that I want to go somewhere. Yeah. So uh, you can send well things to Evernote uh, with my, was it my Ev mm -hmm. or something? At, at like. my E-N. E-N, that's right. Um, All right. But it, most of the, rest of, uh, the recipes on here won't go from Twitter to something else, but you can go from something else to Twitter. Mm, okay. I guess that works if I really want to hang out on Google+, Plus, which I don't. One of the <laughs> things that I use it for is um, 
to send calendar events, and we could talk about more, more about the calendar. I could talk about the calendar for hours and hours. Well, and this, hours. this is actually your your turn up next, anyway, Greg. So well, you can hey. just you can just blather on about the calendar as much as I you have, like. I do have one more thing about oh. the calendar, but I want Greg to talk about this with the calendar, and then go back to the calendar thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things I, I use it for is to take a calendar event uh, on a particular Google Calendar. I just set up one for. Uh, tr like trainings that I do and then when that calendar event happens it automatically sends the calendar event all the notes all the invitees all the details about that event into my Evernote account and, and I have it mm -hmm. into a separate notebook that I just called journal and so then uh, if someone asks me like you know what are the things that you're working on or it, you know that end of the year review summary um, it's really easy for me I have all of them all compiled in one notebook I can search through and find when I trained on a certain topic, who I was with, where I was, uh, all the details about it, and it's all in my Evernote account. And as I'm going to share later, I live in my calendar. And so it makes it really easy for me to be able to just search Evernote rather than scroll through my calendar for eight months' worth of trainings. Right. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, do you want me to show, me, show my last thing? Go for it. Sure. Okay. Um, after I get my parents on Remind 101 and uh, I set up my curation with IFTT, T, <laughs> um, I want my parents to s subscribe. Uh, most of them have some kind of smartphone phone, and I want them to subscribe to my homework calendar so that they get the notifications from the homework reminders. Um, about half my kids might have some kind of smartphone as well. I want to show them how to subscribe to my calendar. I keep all of my assignments uh, and reminders of quizzes and things coming up on my Google Calendar. And I just want to show really quick. It's very simple, I think. They need... Um, it's in calendar settings at the bottom. They need the iCal ad address here. If you click on that, you're going to get this long address. Can you see this? Mm hmm Okay. And it ends in ICS. This is, I put this on my website so they could have access to it. They need to copy that, and then I give them instructions on my blog and how to go through and subscribe to a public calendar with that ICA. Nice. And then it'll just automatically, all of my events will automatically be added to their uh, cell phone calendar. So that's... I love that. Very simple. Yeah, and that works really well, particularly on a you know, mobile device where you can be signed into your account already. Because then, as a clickable link, when you click that, it's going to automatically open up your default calendar application. And if it's Gmail for, or you know, Google Calendar, for example, it will ask you, would you like to subscribe? And they say yes, and they're done. And it's just beautiful how easy it is for me to then push events to their calendar. And so I know that that's a win for you for sure, and it's really yeah. helpful for, for all of our students. That's cool. Yeah, I think I definitely want to do something like that, like sharing the calendar with, my, with the parents. Good idea. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> You're done? I all right. So. It's about time. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> So um, you'll have to throw something at me when I'm over time because I could seriously spend a lot of time on Google Calendar. And I will try not to because I think Google Calendar is one of the most powerful tools uh, available for um, our students and teachers if we're starting to get into productivity. So uh, I will share my screen and we'll see how this goes. Here we go. All righty. And basically what we're looking at now is I just pulled up my May calendar. It looks like a rainbow threw up on it. And, <laughs> but you can I see, like, like when I say I live in my calendar, I'm not kidding. Um, if it, and I tell people, if it's not on my calendar, it does not exist. Uh, and so whenever I am um, scheduling meetings or I'm scheduling trainings, or I'm, even if I'm just going to be doing, you know, walking around the school, going into various teachers' classrooms, it goes in my calendar and I put it in there because if it's not in there, it doesn't exist and I won't do it. I won't remember to do it. And if so it's not in there. Like your, do you use it as like a reminder? Like, 
I guess it's use it oh. as reminders too. Yeah, I, I have my um, basically my calendar app is pretty much the only thing that's uh, got push notifications on my phone, and it will notify me five minutes in advance before each event. Um, which sounds like it would be maddening, but it's really great because I will be right in the middle of a conversation and I need to go. And so it is a great way for me to be able to say, I do have something, it's in five minutes and I do need to go. Can we catch up later? And it just gives me a nice transition period. That's cool. Um, and so I, I really like it a lot. Um, to give you an example, um, though, uh, people say, well, I, I look at this and it, I just get stressed out looking at this. And I just think, well, here's the thing. Remember, I use if, so all my events automatically go into my Evernote account so I have a record of everything I did with everyone that I was with, where I was, and, I mean there is no doubt about what I was working on um, and, and when I w was working on it. And some people say, well, what about breaks? Don't you, don't you need to take breaks? Or, you know, I, I don't know how to schedule. Like, there's, you don't have going to the bathroom in there. I'm like, okay, let's, let's be reasonable. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, am, am I precise, you know, from eight to 8.30 or to 8.29 I'm doing the following things. Well, no, but uh, it, it at least gives me a template or a framework um, that I can kind of structure my day around. And I do, I, and one of the things I do that's really successful uh, for me is I build in breaks. So I schedule meetings with myself. And that to me is a huge productivity tip that I wish everyone would start doing is schedule a meeting with yourself. Um, take Maybe. 10 minutes, take 15 minutes, and just put, like for me, I would put Greg meeting, and then in the details, I would say like, you know, planning, or I would just put something in there that to me is code for Greg's going to go sit in a corner and stare at the wall for 10 minutes because he <laughs> needs to decompress. Right. And that's okay. It's okay to take a break. It's okay. You don't have to be, you know, slammed from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with no breaks built in. Um, I schedule meetings with myself all the time. Sometimes I'll have two, three, four a day because that's what it's going to take for me to be productive during that day. Um, now, did you, can I ask you a question? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Did you have to schedule in the killing of the spider tonight? So that w so, uh, and this is another uh, whole other <laughs> section up. of tips. Um, <laughs> about three minutes before the show. My my beautiful wife um, noticed that there was a spider on the <laughs> ceiling, and therefore I must kill it. I said, "Well, can I kill it after the show that starts in three minutes that I have not opened my browser for?" And she says, "Well, no, it'll go away." So, <laughs> so okay, find a shoe, kill the spider, open up Chrome. Aww. Please, Chrome, open. Chrome, please open. Stop <laughs> emailing. Chrome, open. So um, there's a whole decision-making process that happens in that moment uh, where uh, I, I use a, a kind of quadrant, um, if you will, where if you imagine mm -hmm. an X, Y axis, and then each of your quadrants has a label. So one is not urgent, not important. Okay, so things that are not urgent, not important, urgent just means that it's time sensitive. If I don't do it immediately or by a, a specified time, it dies. It goes away. It doesn't happen. It's not possible anymore. Uh, you know, getting an email about a Friday barbecue sounds great, and it's, but it's urgent. It's not, uh, you know, it wouldn't qualify as a not urgent because after Friday, that's an irrelevant email. So it's not going to qualify in the not important, not urgent. Important just means mission critical. So barbecue on Friday is nice, but it's not mission critical. If I don't go to that barbecue, nothing really changes. I'm hungry, but nothing else really changes. Um, however, flip that around, same event. If all of a sudden I'm the one that's supposed to be cooking at that barbecue and I decide not to go, um, there's going to be a mob of angry people. <laughs> so now that barbecue becomes mission critical, and so that becomes important and then urgent. So an important and urgent, those are fires. Those are spiders on the ceiling. That is a kid just cut his hand open. That's the, you drop everything on your schedule. You do whatever you have to do to, to press pause and to make sure that the fire is put out. And, and so you're, you're stopping everything else that you're doing to take care of the things that are urgent and important. And then you're just basically trying to minimize the number of fires that you have. Um, you, you really want to camp out and spend the most time productive as far as productivity is concerned, you want to spend the most time in the 
not urgent, but important. These are the things that you know that you need to do and you just never really made time for them. Things like, oh, I know I need to update my resume or I know I need to, to really work on my website. I, I know I need to write that book I've been saying I was going to write for the past five years. Uh, I, th those are the things that are not urgent because you could keep delaying them indefinitely, but they are important. They're, they're mm -hmm. important to you in your personal growth and, and to your, your personal development. And so you want to spend the most time you can in the important but not urgent category. And so that decision-making process is how my calendar is developed. Oh, that's what you're color coding. Yeah. Implies? Yeah. Oh, so cool. my, my color coding is um, different calendars mixed with my decision making process. And it's just, like I said, it's a system that works for me. Uh, I would never say that everyone needs to do this because obviously most people look at this and their blood pressure goes up. I look <laughs> at this and I know exactly how I'm going to spend my day. That's cool. Very nice. So that is calendaring and how I set my priorities. Um, within Gmail, one of the things that is really powerful, uh, still tied to the calendar, is this. Uh, if I go up here to more, I can create an event. It's going to open up my calendar. Notice the subject line of the email is now the title of that event. Everyone that was CC'd on that email is over here in my guests and the actual body of the email becomes the description. And so now it's just a matter of me choose, making sure I've got the right day and time. If I need to put a destiny or, you know, where's this going to happen, choose my calendar. Wow. And when I press save, it's going to send invites to all these people and put it on my calendar. And then it's, it's, I'm done with it. I've, how, how'd, you, priority? I'm sorry? how'd you get that over there? I mean, I wasn't paying attention. No, no, no. Just... So from within the email, I've opened up the yeah. email and I've decided this is an event that I need to schedule. I just go to more oh. and then create event. Sweet. And then the rest is just uh, Google that's magic. That's awesome. So that one huh. thing right there saves me so much time because how many times, cool I don't know if, if you do this, but I used to do this all the time before I found that. I would look at the email and then I'd have to go over to my calendar and then I'd have to choose the date and then I'd have to remember who was on the email and what were we talking about and I'd switch back and forth and I'd have to read one and go back to the other and it was just not efficient. And so for me to be able to basically in two clicks get the, the – whole event with everyone that needs to be on it with all the details from the email and then I just hit save that is a huge time saver for me that's cool so if I can remember how to there we go I was trying to remember how to turn off my screen uh, here I like how Michael Jackson ask you look right now <laughs> with the microphone Which decade <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> microphone the microphone is, is so that if my dogs decide that you know they're threatened by somebody outside, that um, it won't really interrupt us. You'll you won't hear them. Ah, oh, good. Because my my dogs might also. <laughs> <laughs> you will hear mine. No, they're not in the room right now. So, and then the last thing I just wanted to throw out there. Um, is uh, it's called Wapwolf, W-A-P-P-W-O-L-F, Wapwolf.com. Uh, there are actually a couple of pieces within Wapwolf. Um, it's a Dropbox and Automator. It also has uh, a Google Drive Automator and a Box, if you use Box.net, Automator. And so, for example, one of the things that I use this for is if I drop a PDF into a particular folder in my Dropbox, it will automatically convert it to an EPUB format and send it to my Kindle. Um, oh. And some of you are like, oh, well, you know, the, the Kindle reads a PDF. Yeah, but it's better in an ebook format. So that's one of the things I use it for. You, oh. could, um, you could put pictures in there. So if I say I put a picture into a particular folder, uh, I could have it automatically upload to Facebook or I could have it automatically emailed or I could have it, uh, you know, rotated and converted to a different format uh, and it will automate all those actions. What this would look like in the classroom would be, for example, um, if I wanted to be able to send out a file that I have to all my students very quickly, uh, I could drop it into 
say, a, a student folder within Dropbox, and WAPWOLF will, uh, can automatically email that file to the students. You could set up that particular process. Uh, so there's a lot of really great tools, um, whether you're in Dropbox, in Google Drive, or in Box, and it just automates some of those processes so that you don't have to do them over and over and over. That's, That's awesome. Great. I was looking at um, Growl, growl.info, um, and I, I didn't want to play with it because it was $4, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't pay for things. Uh, you know, teacher salary, I'm really cheap. Yeah. And so anytime someone's like, oh, it's $4, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mm, I can that's... find something that's free. What was it, um, the Alfred app share? What was that called? Alfred. Yeah, yeah. Alfred, um, it, I think it, it doesn't need... Well, it, 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 first of all, you can find anything on anything you have, whether it's your Google Drive, your Dropbox. It searches everything for you. Um, again, I haven't looked at it closely. I just downloaded it just for the show. Um, it also sounds like you can make shortcuts to, to everything using your, your keypad. So like whether macros. you want to, yeah, like you can open Facebook and yeah. it'll be like, you, and, and you make it yourself, like maybe option V or something, it will open Facebook or, you know, any number of things like that. So it just, it just makes your workflow faster. I'm definitely going to try it out though. Yeah, cool. I, I'm a huge fan of Alfred. It's um, oh, you use it? Okay. I, I do. It's it's really nice to be able to set some custom shortcuts. Um, I'm a keyboard shortcut junkie. Me too. Um, which really helps whenever an operating system changes, and I don't know where the buttons are anymore. Uh, this happened at one of my previous districts when we made the jump from XP to Windows Seven, and. Thank goodness that Microsoft didn't touch those keyboard shortcuts because I was just Windows window keying around to to find all the the different uh, actions that I needed. And kids were like, "I don't know where to click." I'm like, "Well, it's this on the keyboard." And so I I ended up teaching keyboard shortcuts just because I didn't know where to click. Yeah, I always do that too. All right, is it my turn? I, I think, think so. so. Yay! Hold on. I'm so much smoother at this usually. <laughs> we haven't heard this one in a while. I know. I think I played it last time. I don't think you did. Oh, Ice Ice Baby. Ice Ice, yeah. <laughs> I got the wig. Did you get that wig at the thrift shop? In my pocket. Where is crooked? Wait. Do we only have 30 seconds with it, though? It's over. Okay. I know. We're so worried about copyright. Um, okay. So, this is the part that's blacked out, so you couldn't see it. Let me get my reflector app. I'm waiting. I know. Why can't I do this? Do I have a reflector open? You're going to do it with your clown wig on. <laughs> oh, I think that's perfect. <laughs> I love it. I'm just clowning around. Oh, look what oh, I I'm found. Oh, I'm not on What a dumbass you know how, I am. You know how I'm cleaning my house while I'm waiting for you? Look what I found. <gasps> oh, that makes me so happy. I know. It's probably not making I me loud I couldn't throw yet. it out. Oh. I just couldn't throw it out. Stupid. Oh, we have more explain no, everything yeah. codes, by the way. Oh, yeah. Hey, and Katie, while Sherry is queuing that up, you should um, tell how I made it onto this show in the first place. Oh, we did. Would you, did we discuss no, how, that story? K Katie, how do you know me? How do I know you? We go way back. <laughs> Um, I, <laughs> that okay. You see that right? That badge. This is from last year. That's what that's what cued yeah. it in my brain. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, so it was at three and a half years ago. I went um, to Nicegate for my very first time. What did I do there? I presented on I presented on a couple of things, Moodle and uh, Photo Story, and I my first like conference ever. No, my second conference. But my first NiceGate conference, and that's the uh, New York State um, EdTech one. It's her first time at the conference, and, so, and she was presenting. 
and I was presenting because I am an overachiever like that. So uh, because I was presenting, I got you know a little discount, and I used <laughs> that extra money to go to this web. What was it? Web two O tools in the classroom. Sure. Yeah. That was three and a half years ago. I've slept since then. <laughs> no, I know that he was doing Edmodo. I remember that. So um, it was actually really, I learned a lot. And that night I did not sleep because my mind was just reeling with things. But uh, I remember Greg talking about Edmodo. And I'm like, yeah, well, I use Moodle because it's just so awesome. And Greg was like, well, you know, Moodle's really good, but. Right. Edmodo is more accessible to a lot of people, a lot more people. And I was like, well, I really just like Moodle. So I had it up while he was talking about Edmodo. I had it, I had Moodle up on my screen. And? And Sherry was over her left shoulder. And I was also using Moodle at the time, which is, um, it's, it's really not, it has a huge learning curve. And when you see someone who is using Moodle, you're pretty excited to know them. So I was like, you use Moodle? And we we just and that was in, in Greg's class. Greg is yeah. the one who brought the Lady Geeks together. So and I, I remember going to lunch and being like, "Oh, I hope that lady with the black hair sits <laughs> near me. I really want to talk to her. She seemed really cool." The cool and, kids table. <laughs> but you were thinking the same thing because we. I felt like such a dork. You felt like such a dork. I had no idea. No, so, let me tell you what a dork. Because you you always forget this part of the story. This is the dorkiest part, is I went out that night, went out, out, and had a blast. And I'm texting you. I don't even know you. And I'm, like, texting you saying, go out with us. And you're like, no, I'm going to hang out in my hotel room. So get, I had to get ready for my first nice So her day. presentation was the very next morning at, like, K. Uh, it had to be 9 a.m. Yeah. And I was so hungover. It was on Moodle, though. <laughs> yes. And, and, and Sherry, she helped me. She didn't heckle me, which we are known for doing. Yes. So did you have to rename the presentation Muddling Through Moodle as you tried to turn the <laughs> no, lights down? And, you know, that's the very first time that we worked together, Cher, and it's always been that way. I'm very organized. I had it all ready, and all she does is, like, insert her little things. Like, and that's exactly how we started, and that's what? exactly how we work now. <laughs> didn't you just do that with the RFP? <laughs> Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just put your name on it. <laughs> right. See? <It's> how... <laughs> and I'm the dumb one. Right. <laughs> oh, thank you. No so Greg has a very special place in our hearts because yes. we met through him, by him, from him, because of him. And I, the story that I like to tell in, in all of that when people are like, well, how do you know Katie Regan? And I'm like, well, as a matter of fact, um, she – came in late to one of my first presentations ever and I'm it, never late. You you were like ten minutes late and which was not a big deal because, you know, I'm just go with the flow. But um, <laughs> what made it an impression was when you like left and you brought someone back with you after lunch. Uh, and, like no, I don't I didn't. Yeah, some yeah, there was a you were you asked because you asked me, uh, like, hey, would it be okay if he sat in on this? And I was like, Yeah, fine, huh. fine with me. So what? Yeah. I do not remember that at all. That's, Katie, you're so rude. No, it was, it was awesome. That wasn't me. That was the, the girl with the curly hair that <laughs> taught Latin. <laughs> no, she, she was right. there, and, and she was attentive. But, um, you know, I, I, I think it was the B. Katie Regan 88. <laughs> well, Katie. you know, and Greg and I have kind of kept in touch ever since then. That's the power of uh, technology, and sometimes... You know, technology needs a real-life event to really get things started. All right, I'm going to start screen sharing and break up this little love fest here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my home screen porn. Uh, hey, Katie, notice hey. anything different about my home screen? Um, yeah, hold on. I'm selecting your... I'm not seeing Stitcher on there. You are not seeing that rat bastard Stitcher on there. I do <gasps> not like Stitcher. No, Ooh. I do not. The claws are no. coming out. Okay. First of all, it only supports audio. How am I supposed to watch user friendly? I can't. It only supports audio. I can. I cannot get video. I cannot find my video things I like to watch, and I watch a lot of videos. Not okay. not nasty ones though. 
Uh-huh. And, okay, so sometimes I'll be uh, listening to a podcast, because obviously I can't watch a podcast on there. So I'll be listening to a podcast, and the podcast has a commercial, Twit has them. But not only am I listening to Twit's freaking commercials, Stitcher has commercials. Oh, great. So I get to listen to advertising. So I got it for free, yay, but I get to listen to ads. But not yeah, only free. that, okay, for $2, it's $2 for Downcast. Still too expensive. You get, you get video, user-friendly. Us, dumbass. Us. We are on video as well. Um, okay. So, and also at the bottom of Stitcher, they have banner ads. And so, you, it's free. and so you accidentally will click on the banner ad, which is annoying. So just ads all over the place. I don't know. That, that is, wow. Really, really, I'm, I won't use it. So you're saying it's like, free like a free puppy. Yeah. yeah um, if you mean like destroying everything that you love kind of free puppy, because that's, well, that's what it's my podcast do. listening experience. You know, I feel like I just got slapped in the face. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. And now I'm I'm gonna cry myself to sleep. All right. While you're crying yourself to sleep, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk about my uh, app of the week. Let me uh, or my podcast of the week because that was just the preface. Well, um, because you um, spent so much time in the preface, you have one minute. Oh, shut up! <laughs> I do not even like you right now. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna like my Mac or my um. You my liked me last night. You like me? I mean, I, that sounded really bad. That's not what I meant. <laughs> and you'll wonder why they think we're lesbians. Could you stop? <laughs> you say stupid stuff like that, and I say I love you, and then people think that we are a couple. There's worse you're things. Hot. There's worse things. Now yeah, you're hot, so I'm good. Um... So anyway, no, my, my podcast of the week is actually uh, Mac Break Weekly. The host of it is Leah Laporte. Uh, this is from the Twit um, community, I think. Um, but this particular week, so if you listen to this week's episode, he talks about the Chromebook a lot and, and what his experience has been like using the Chromebook. And you know that right now I'm pretty passionate about it because not only am I going to have a classroom full of them, I have one at home right now that they let me have for the summer. So... I mean, really, he was basically saying that for the money, the Chromebook is a nice device. And you play with it yesterday, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's nice. It's very lightweight. You know, for, for what it does, I think it's really great. I um, Instagrammed a picture of the Chromebook and the MacBook Air side by side. Yeah. Uh, and weight. Oh, yeah. And uh, mostly in the feel, I mean, the Chromebook, or the Chromebook's a little bit thicker, but they look very similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they also talked about on this episode mobile apps versus HTML, HTML5, which I think is really interesting because what he was basically saying is, you know, with all these web-based app creation tools out there, that many apps are going as these web apps, and it's becoming really popular. And I, I just like that because I know we talk about that sometimes, building apps and having a classroom app, and that we're going to have a an app building smackdown soon on the show. The only problem with the HTML5 apps though is that it has to be connected to the internet so if you are going through Canada and you don't have Wi-Fi access, you don't have any kind of service, you can't access that app. It's only Wi-Fi? Not like... And well HTML5 is internet. Like it's on yeah. the internet. So why wouldn't I have my internet on my phone? I don't have service in Canada. You oh, have international I... charges. Oh. Or if you are like me, I actually uh, I just moved apartments, and my the other apartment I was in was pretty much a Faraday cage. Um, <laughs> I I would step out and I'd have just just blazing fast LTE connection, but as soon as I go inside the apartment, I got nothing. And so uh, yeah, it it would be nice to have some things that were just local. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of the things too uh, with. Um, mobile apps versus HTML5 is um, not only the internet connection, but then the ability of the mobile app to tap into the local resources of the device. And it's just a lot mm. tougher for an HTML5 app to know 
what is native to the device that is right. being accessed from. You know, so my not, not on my iPhone. Photos, oh yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Right. It's just a lot tougher. It can be done. It can be done. So developers out there, don't throw things at me and don't hack my computer. <laughs> I, I'm on your side on this, but uh, it is tougher to um, make an HTML5 app that will actually be universal than it is to have a native mobile app. I think on this show they were actually talking about some people who are designing games that are HTML5. There's a great What's... racer game in Chrome that's actually really cool, and it's just an HTML5 uh, Chrome app that you use that just a Chrome web browser to, to play, and it's really, really fun. What's the name of it? I want to say it's called Dev Racer. Um, somebody can fact check me on that one, but uh, I want to say it's called Dev Racer, D-E-V Racer. Was that on your schedule for today? No. That's bonus. <laughs> I found that one at ISTE last week. Oh, yeah. I'm so jealous. It was in my backyard, so it was easy for me to go. Oh, yeah. yeah um, we have, like, exactly one minute. Do we want to talk about Wonderlist real quick? Uh, yeah, we can talk about Wonderlist. Uh, for Wonderlist. Wonderlist. For, oh, uh, we will put uh, links to everything that you are hearing about today on the show notes in about 24 hours. That's my job, so <laughs> it'll be there in about 48 hours. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll have links to everything mentioned. I can't find that dev racer. Oh, I did. I think I found it. Um, we'll have links to everything in the show notes. Yes. Go ahead, Boo. Okay, so we have been using an app. It's an iOS app, but it's also web-based. It's called uh, Wonderlist, and we can share lists and add things to each other's to-do lists, and then we can also have private lists, and it can notify me um, either badge notifications or email notifications when uh, something has been completed or when I need to be reminded about something. I have a huge list of my own things that I have to do this week, and then I have my Lady Geek list, and then I have Sherry's list. So um, it's kind of a neat thing um, that we're using. That we, we, It seems to work for us. Right? Yeah, it's called Racer. Yes, it works for us. I, I like it. I like that um, when you get things done, I get notifications that you've completed mm -hmm. tasks. And when I don't complete tasks, you know that I haven't done them also. <laughs> yeah, but then there's like times at 2 o'clock in the morning I'm getting five <laughs> notifications. Sherry, Sherry, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, I, I keep weird hours. That's just, that's just what how I do. Go? Oh, we, we only had him scheduled till 10, so I think he dropped out on us. Oh, okay. All right, well, we uh, are done. Yeah. Ed Great Tech show. Housewives? Ed Tech Housewives? I don't know. I never heard of it. I don't know where it came from. I didn't put it in the show notes. I didn't put it in the show notes. You do know I can find out. Yeah, revision history. Go ahead, because I didn't do it. Bitch. I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> All right, so conference we're going to in September 2nd, 3rd. We'll be at Screencast Camp. Anything else? August. Sure? August. Or August, that's what I said. Um, August, yeah. We might be going to the Google one in October. October. And then, you know, we have Nice Gate in November, the big one. Of course. That's yeah. the big one. The big one. All right. All right, I'm done with you. Of course you are. I love you, baby. I love you, too.